All right, so what kind of work environment do we need to be efficient at programming with Python? Uh, the question can be posed for any programming language, really. And so the answer is usually going to be the same. I mean, feel free, if you want to, to open up Notepad on Windows or, uh, you know, some basic text editor and write a script and go over to the terminal or command prompt and run it. However, that's not efficient for a variety of reasons. So what we're going to be using is an IDE, uh, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. And we're going to be using JetBrains PyCharm. Now, PyCharm is free uh, for, I spelled that wrong. Uh, just go to Google, search PyCharm, and click on the link there, uh, which is from jetbrains.com. And you can download it. Now, when you get to the download screen, you're going to get a professional or community version. Choose the community version that is free. It uh, It's completely fully featured as far as I can tell and that's the one that we're going to be using in this video. Now alternatively I mean you can go have a look at other IDEs for Python but I find that this one it just works really well it's simple and it does everything that we need it to do and it also has some advanced features which uh, we may look at at some point in the future. Uh, so go ahead and download the installer for your platform. It does require Java as well. So you can just open up Google and type uh, download Java. And it's going to take you to java.com slash download. If you click that link, just click it, download the appropriate version for your system. And once you have that installed, then you can install PyCharm. So let's take a walk around PyCharm right quick. So this is going to be the first screen that you see every time you start up PyCharm. The first launch screen is a bit different. You can choose a theme and whatnot. Um, all that is relevant, really. Uh, we're going to create a new project. It's going to be pure Python. Now there's also other options here if you want to start a Django project, etc. We're just going to start a Python project here. And we're going to choose version 3.5.1, uh, which is also going to tell the, uh, the IDE here where to find the binary files to run Python. Um, now, we're also going to name the project here. So first program. And this is just going to be the name of our project. It's going to create a folder called first program and this is how we're going to identify it within here. So, uh, Along the left hand side here this is the project view so let's go ahead and right click and create a new file. Now additionally you can create new directory, a Python package, and a bunch of different file types here. We're just going to choose Python file and I'm going to name it main uh, which is going to name it main.py. And here we can start typing our script. So again, I'm just going to use the hello world uh, example. And that's all it's going to be. Now I'm going to save it. Uh, sh keyboard shortcuts are going to take you a long way if you're going to become a programmer. So I expect you know some already. If you don't, on Windows and Linux, Control S saves a file, and on OS X, it's Command S. Uh, so you don't have to always go through the menus and stuff, but let's have a look through the menus. Uh, if you want to create a new project, a new file, or directory, uh, you can open one, etc. You can actually access the settings uh, by going to uh, default settings for this project, uh, and bunch of different options down here that we don't really need. Uh, if you go to edit, you're going to see you can undo and it's also going to show you the uh, corresponding keyboard shortcuts for each one of these options. So this is command Z and that's going to undo whatever action I previously did. This is also going to be useful uh, if you're going to become a professional programmer. Uh, same is true for copy, paste, uh, find, 
We're going to be discussing find uh, at some point. I mean, it's a pretty powerful command you can find not only in the current file, but your entire project. If you want to look for instances of uh, a variable or string or something, you can actually search through the entire uh, root directory of this project if you want. If you go to view and go to tool windows here, uh, is, is what we're looking at here. Project, if we select that, it's going to, uh, it should hide that. Yeah, so it hid the project uh, sidebar. So we're gonna leave that open. Uh, now we can also show uh, favorite structure, etc. If you have version control set up, this will not be disabled and you can use that to perform version control actions. We're gonna open up a uh, Python console here. And here, uh, we can actually run Python code if we wanted to say uh, 5 plus 5, you know, and it's going to return that. So this is the interpreter itself. However, if we want to actually uh, open terminal, we can open a terminal here. And here we can just type Python 3 uh, main.py. And it's going to run what we have up in this file right here. Now, additionally, we have a run right here. We can set up run, a run configuration here, uh, to actually, every time we hit the run, it's gonna automatically run our project. So let's go ahead and hit the plus sign, uh, choose Python, and it's gonna be called uh, Python run. The script is going to be Python 3, or the script is going to be the, the actual Python script that we want run. So this is going to be main.py. Script parameters, this is if we're passing in any uh, arguments or anything we're not going to. It's already found the Python interpreter because when we set up the project, we chose the correct Python version. Uh, this is going to be interpreter options. We're not going to be using any. And that's all that we need to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and click apply and then run. And it's going to run the script output that and then it says it finished with exit code zero which is completely normal so every time you want to run if you have this little uh, section opened here just hit that play button the the run button there and it's going to run the code in real time so make changes hit control s and then run the code right there this is the most efficient way to run a program uh, in an IDE, you know, you don't have to switch back and forth between windows and stuff. So this is the prime reason that we're going to be using this uh, IDE for the sake of this course. Again, feel free to have uh, a look at some others, but I recommend if you're a complete novice to any of this, uh, just follow along exactly with what I'm doing and you shouldn't have a problem. However, if you do, there's a discussion section to the right of this video. Use it. Let me know if you have any trouble and I'll try to clear it up. So with all that said, we are finally ready to actually get in to the language itself.